New Central now at this hour begins with court matters where a federal high court sitting in Abuja, the nation's capital, has rejected a request by the immediate past governor of Kogi State, Yaya Bello, to halt trial in the hearing of 80.2 billion Naira fraud charges brought, before, uh, brought against him. Now, Bello asked the court to stay execution in his trial before Justice Emeka Mwite on the grounds that there is an appeal filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission before the Court of Appeal against the contempt application filed by the defendant against the EFCC chairman, Olao Lukoyede. Now, Justice Mwite, in his ruling on Friday, however, rejected the application made by Bello through his lawyer. He held that Bello was trying to make rubbish out of a criminal case by choosing to stay in his house and not respect the court orders. Staying with the courts, the Federal Capital Territory High Court in Abuja on Thursday barred the immediate past Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, his daughter Fatima, and son-in-law, Jadlil Hama, from traveling outside the country. Justice Silvanus Orji ruled that they must not leave the country pending the conclusion of their 2.7 billion naira fraud trial. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Thursday on a six-count burdening on 2.7 billion naira fraud uh, as they were arraigned alongside Al Baruch Investment Limited. The Antigraft Agency alleged that Sirica abused his office by awarding a consultancy uh, of a 1.3 billion naira contract for the Nigerian air startup to Tianero Nigeria Limited. The commission said in doing that, the ex-minister acted contrary to Section 19 of the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act of 2000. Now, a federal high court in Abuja, the nation's capital, has granted 100 million naira bill each to a former minister of aviation, Hadi Sirika, his daughter, and two others. They are being tried over an alleged fraud case to the tune of 7.2.7 billion naira. Now, according to the court, they are also to provide two shorties who must have landed properties in Abuja. The court also restricted the defendants from traveling abroad without its permission. The trial will commence on the 10th, 11th, and 20th of June. As counsel to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Rotimi Jacobs, spoke on the bill conditions granted by the court. Two cases filed against the former minister. So the first one is taken before this is lordship here. So we are going to contend for the other one in another date. So, but the bill is at the discretion of the court. So it's for the court to decide whether it is adequate or not. So a counsel in his own right cannot criticize the judge whether the, the conditions are liberal or high or low. But I think it is fair. Yes, thank you. Well, there, there are other, there are other um, um, issues that are that, that were introduced, like the the Nigerian Airways um, with the Topia something, which we had to hit, so it was not there originally. But Nigerian Air matter is uh, there are two counts on it. That's why we amended it. The condition that one of the short team must own property in Abuja and must um, deposit um, some some uh, money out or. or um, bond and all those things. So it's, uh, it's, I don't think it's a uh, strenuous. Um, it's, it's a good. Earlier, we were joined on the news by Elvis Asia, legal practitioner, to discuss this. Speaking, we share the fact that, um, in general speaking, when a pay bond amount is announced like this, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to pay it unless that is part of the conditions given, which is uh, very rare. The idea is that you, you know, give the bond um, and to almost like an undertaking that the person will be brought to court uh, to face his or her charges or trial. So if the, for whatever reason uh, you are unable to produce a person, then you may forfeit that bond. That means that you have to pay that money, or if you had if you had paid it, you will lose you will lose it. So it's really uh, nothing new. Um, I don't think the, the amount is um, too much. Um, I think, given the nature of the offence that for which uh, the minister and the other people have been um, uh, tried, I, I don't think it's, uh, it's too out of place to place that amount. So I, I want to believe that the minister will have people uh, that will be able to meet that condition. 
Let's also tell you that the U.S. Department of Justice has been asked to reopen an investigation into energy giants, Shell and Eni, over their alleged involvement in a bribery scandal in Nigeria. The scandal surrounds the acquisition of OPL 245. U.S. lawmakers now want the department to ascertain the payment of bribe to Nigerian government officials to the tune of $1.1 billion. Nigeria's former president, Goodluck Jonathan, is accused of receiving $200 million. The renewed call follows revelation of alleged extensive corruption within the oil industry, with allegations suggesting that Shell and any orchestrated illicit payments to secure lucrative oil contracts. This latest development underscores the persistent efforts by international authorities to hold corporations accountable for unethical practices in the pursuit of profit. The FCPA investigation initially launched in response to suspicion of corruption surrounding the OPL 245 deal gained renewed momentum as new evidence surfaced, shedding light on the extent of dirty deals within the energy sector. The House of Representatives have scored on Nigeria's Vice President Kashim Shatima, who is the chairman of the board of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, to convene an emergency meeting of the board to address issues related to the resuscitation of the Ga of the Bara Barain that's a power plant. Lawmakers say that the plant, located in Bayelsa State, South South Nigeria, lost its power control model in a fire incident since uh, thousands and is yet to be replaced this uh, therefore complicating the nation's power challenges they also accused the niger delta power holding company of failing to bring the plant back on stream reaching its potential the Bonaire power station can confidently power the whole niger delta region and beyond mr speaker the house is sudden that rather than resuscitate the power plant, which is built with 400 million US dollars and valued out of today with over 800 million US dollars, the management of the Niger Delta Power Holding uh, Company is proposing to designate the 252 megawatt open circle power station as a construction site. It is the intervention of the Bayelsa State Government that have kept this equipment intact because they are supposed to be under control temperature. If not, they could have been uh, exploded. Mr. Speaker, the House resolved to urge the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is the Chairman of the Board of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, to summon emergency, uh, uh, emergency meeting of the Board for urgent resuscitation of the Barai Power Plant in order to increase natural grid. I, those against you say nay, that is have it. Nigeria's House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Foreign Affairs to conduct a thorough investigation over allegations of charging Nigerians exorbitant visa fees and denying them visas after payment. This followed the adoption of a motion raised on the floor of the House, as lawmakers expressed concerns saying many Nigerians around the world are with challenges bordering on uh, consular services. The lawmakers say that because of this, many Nigerians have been stranded outside the country, with others held in correctional centers against their wish. Students are stranded in foreign lands over issues that can be resolved and that many Nigerians own businesses around the world helping to contribute to the economy of those countries and sending remittances back home. They are suffering harassment and sabotage. Several modes of visa applications are in force, including express services with huge costs paid by applicants who are sometimes denied visa after such payments. Conscious that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, in addition to budgetary allocation, benefits from intervention funds from running the affairs of the ministry and missions, as well as the internally generated revenue by several missions around the world, has questions in the effective and efficient utilization of such funds over the years. Motion should say aye. Those against should say nay. That's it. This motion is referred to the Committee on Foreign Affairs for further legislative. 
The House of Representatives has resolved to probe the ongoing 15 trillion Naira Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway project. As such, the House said it would set up an ad hoc committee which would investigate the project and submit a report within four weeks. The resolution of the House followed the adoption of a motion of urgent public importance, moved during plenary by the member representing Gear East and Gear West Federal Constituency Benue State. Austin Akado. Now, the House also resolved to summon the Attorney General of the Federation and also the Minister of Justice, Atif Agbemi, the Minister of Finance, Wale Edo, and his works counterpart, David Omari, to shed more light on the project. The Nigerian Senate has approved the death penalty for illicit drug trafficking in the country. This followed a debate on the floor of the Senate during the third reading of the National Drug Law Enforcement Act 2024. New Central's Amadin Uyi reports. It was a debate on the NDLA Act 2024 as part of the process for amendment. The act which was being read for a third time saw lawmakers make their final input on the amended act as the Senate dissolved into a committee of the whole. Clause 17. Dealing with exploitation of dangerous substances is deleted as the provision of the principal act, section 22, is contrary to the rule of double jeopardy, which generally prevents a person from being tried or punished twice on the same offense. As such, it is totally expunged from the act. As lawmakers review the clause recommending the penalty for drug trafficking, a heated debate ensued over the decision to adopt the death penalty. I am surprised that the committee is recommending a softer punishment. It was a life imprisonment. In fact, we should change it to death sentence. This is practice everywhere in this country that are serious about dealing with drugs. So when we come to take it close by close, please, distinguished colleagues, let's change that section 11 to read death sentence, whether by hanging or whatever. Death. We must be honest, transparent in the decision. I am accountable to my conscience and to my community. Death sentence is not a matter for A, nay, or nay. Everybody should vote so that we will be counted when it matters, those who vote for death and those who vote for punishment. I, no, no, you cannot. We take a vote. It's a, it's a fundamental issue. We are making law here. This is not a motion. While some lawmakers wanted the Senate to adopt a life imprisonment penalty following a voice vote, the Deputy President of the Senate overruled their votes, saying their decision had come late. With this concluded, the Senate passed the bill for the third time. In Abuja for News Central, I am Amadin Uyi. To discuss this further, I am joined on the news by principal partner Benita Law Firm, the and independent resource person on security and justice issues, Ogu Ogechi. Thank you for joining me on the news. Now, let's talk about uh, the death penalty. Uh, I mean, being a severe punishment, can you analyze the potential effectiveness of capital punishment in uh, serving as deterrence to issues like drug trafficking compared to? other approaches. I mean, how does this measure align with Nigeria's human rights obligations? I, I'm breathing in deeply. I, I am shocked at this uh, development because I was thinking we have passed uh, this stage. Death sentence is no longer the way to go. It does not align with the human rights uh, principles. Uh, even in violent uh, offenses, uh, it is recommended, it's a UN recommendation that the states should not come down to the level of the violent persons in the societies. Killing somebody is quite violent. A state cannot be seen to be in the same space with violent uh, offenders. So giving that sentence, that sentence, you know, you cannot take away. It is final, the person is gone, and it, there's nothing else that can be done about it. So a state should not be seen to be in that space. Then more so, you know, there's a moratorium on death sentence, and it is expected that states should put 
they are hold the execution of even persons that have already been convicted and execution. And it is quite unfortunate that Nigeria has made a headway, although we have not stopped, you know, granting of death sentence already on existing laws. Yet Nigeria has gone ahead to make a little, you know, uh, improvement regarding this by having in the, a provision in the Nigerian Correctional Service Act that says that those on death sentence that have not been executed opportunities of uh, appeal at both the uh, the appeal and Supreme Court. Mm. Now, the yes, of course, you've said quite a number of things. Okay, yeah. sorry to interject, but uh, just to cut in there, the bill actually targets a range of offences related to drugs. Are there concerns mm. that the application of the death penalty could be uneven or lead to unfair outcomes? Death sentence, I am even shocked that they lumped everybody, you know, together in this, both traffickers and the uh, users of People now, uh, under the UN, the abuse of consider the public health issue. It is an issue uh, of health should rather be subjected for treatment to treatment and not punishment. Going in about drug users. Although we agree that even the, those, those that traffic drugs can also be using the drugs, but that is the drug that is the trafficker of drugs. But from the bill, as it is seen, they are lumping together drug users and uh, drug traffickers. And I'm wondering what purpose if the punishment is given, because already we have fueling our correctional centers already. So many persons that are on to them and the world is looking at us and the human rights torture for somebody to be sentenced to death and the person has spent 20 years of all right waking up every day and imagining that would be the last day of his life you know without anything happening that's why the that new law made by the same Okay. Okay, Chi, uh, I'm sorry to also, uh, of course, uh, interject here, but, but we're pressed for time. Uh, quickly, mm. you talked about human rights uh, law. I mean, the death sentence on uh, drug peddling is not peculiar, you know, exclusively to Nigerians. Quite a number of Asian countries actually uh, practice it, you know, not just for drug peddling, even for, you know, public office. And, um, I mean, uh, you are saying that Nigeria, you know, could have explored all the alternatives. What other alternatives are there to actually address the root cause of this problem? The whole essence of punishment is it should be to serve a purpose. The purpose is the purpose of reducing crime. And going by what is happening with even those Asian countries, the question is, has drug peddling stopped? The answer is no. So what we should be doing is to look at sentences that should serve the purpose of reducing crime and tightening of the system. We have laws at hand already. Why, why it is so, why we are where we are is that in terms of managing the system of corrections, the system, our criminal justice system, there's a good challenge because the drug users equally have a lot of illicit funds with which they can compl uh, compromise the security institutions and the agents in terms of getting them arrested and doing the needful. So in what we need is a tighter system that can prevent the drugs from coming in and not is talking about death penalty because there are ways uh, justice at the long run. And what is happening now in terms of punishment, the expectation is that people should know that there is certainty of application of any sanction that has been 
put in place. But if the system is not functioning so well, and these people believe that they can slip out of the hands of the criminal justice system, whether you say you're giving them 10 times debt at the same time, it will not happen. So what we should be targeting at is empowering and strengthening our criminal justice uh, system to perform better, to do the needful in terms of you know, implementing the laws so that it will be clear that these people can be arrested. And if they're arrested, there can be a punishment. It's mm -hmm. not just by saying death penalty, because it might not eventually solve the problem. And it's not putting us on the right focus. Because all that has been achieved in the last uh, periodic review, Nigeria submitted, you know, the fact of, you know, committing death sentence to life in certain circumstances as the one of the major achievements the country has made in the past. And if we talk about copying from other countries what they are doing, there are so many other wonderful things that are happening in other countries in terms of employment opportunities, in terms of business, in terms of economic growth, in right. terms of the social life of the people, which we can copy. So we cannot just say Asia countries are giving death sentences. We rush and pick death sentences and start giving. Now, another thing is there should be a connectivity between laws. The same Senate that enacted the other law that is progressive in terms of human rights is the same uh, Senate now that is going back to go and start, you know, talking about death sentence for drug users, drug uh, peddlers, and the rest of them. We should think, let our laws connect to one another so that we don't do one step forward and one step backwards. All right, uh, Ugo Ogechi, thank you so much for being with me on the news. Thank you. All right. Now let's move to politics. The Clark Rivers State House of Assembly, Dr. Emeka Amadi, has said there was no change in the leadership of the Assembly, stating that Martin Amaule remains the Speaker, while Dumele Maul and Major Jack remains Deputy Speaker and Majority Leader, respectively. In a press release signed by the CLAC titled A Disclaimer by the River State House of Assembly issued on Thursday night, Amadi said, apart from the seat of Kana Constituency 2, which was declared vacant because of the death of the member who represented the constituency, no other seat has been declared vacant. He went further to state that Victor Oko Jumbo, Sokari, Good Boy Sokari, and Adolphus Orubemi Himoti, we are suspended on the 30th of October 2023, pursuant to the rules of the House, and their suspension is yet to be lifted, and they cannot lay claim to be officers of the House. Let's now bring you an update from the Defence Headquarters, where Prince Harry and his wife, Meghan, have been welcomed. The UK royal family arrived in Nigeria to champion the Invictus Games, which Prince Harry founded to aid the rehabilitation of wounded and sick service members and veterans. The couple are currently receiving a warm reception at the Defence Headquarters of Abuja. This royal visit is expected to boost Nigeria's chances of hosting the Invictus Games, as the couple visiting the West African nation for the first time on the invitation of the military will meet with wounded soldiers and their families. What Nigerian officials have said is a show of support to improve the soldiers' morale and well-being. Now, following protests by some civil society organizations in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, a journalist with the Foundation for Investigative Journalism, Daniel Ojuku, who was abducted by intelligence response team of the Inspector General of Police, has regained freedom. Ojuku regained freedom on Friday after 10 days in police captivity. FIJ disclosed this on Friday on its website. Ojuku was said to have gone missing on Wednesday, that's May 1st. His number was switched off and his whereabouts are known to colleagues, family and friends. On Thursday, some civil society organization and journalists stormed the force headquarters in Abuja to demand the release of Ojuku.
Bandits on Thursday night invaded the Confluence University of Science and Technology, or SARA, or Kene, in Kogi State and abducted nine students. An eyewitness account indicated that the bandits swapped on the university around 9 p.m. local time, while the students were reading for their upcoming exams. The source said that the bandits came in through the bush, went into three lecture halls and began to shoot into the air to scare the students. A student who craved anonymity said that he and some colleagues ran to the bush and hid there for more than an hour. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Christopher Musa, has restated the resolve of the Nigerian military in maintaining the highest level of international standards of human rights as troops carry out their responsibilities. This was captured in the remarks of the General Officer Commanding 3rd Division and the Commander of Operation Safe Haven, Major General Abdul Salam Abubakar, at the Human Rights Lecture organized by the Defense Headquarters for Troops of Operation Safe Haven in Plateau State. New Central's Chizaba and Yonwe was there and has this to tell us. Infringement on the rights of civilians has remained one of the factors counting against some troops of the Nigerian army and indeed other security formations in the country. Amnesty International had on several occasions prosecuted heads of these formations which negated the laws of freedom and rights of civilians. Against this backdrop of abuses, Major General Abubakar maintained that sessions such as this cannot be overemphasized. It is pertinent to note that by the nature of our operations, especially in Operation Safety, personnel have been inundated on the need to operate within the ambit of the law with maximum respect for the rule of law and the rights of our dear Civilians. Undesirable forms of torture meted out on civilians by some security personnel remain key areas troops were asked to desist from even when eliciting information from suspects. The main cross of military operations once members of the armed forces are called out by virtue of section 217 sub 2 paragraph C of the Nigerian Constitution. Once you are called out for the purpose of restoring law and order, automatically you will have that primary responsibility of protecting civilians. Section 1A and the Touch of Act 2017 states that the government shall ensure that the rights of all persons, including suspects, detainees, and prisoners, are respected at all times, and that no persons placed under investigation or held in custody of any person in authority shall be subjected to physical harm, force, violence, threats, or intimidation of any act that impairs his free will. Special Advisor on Human Rights to the Chief of Defense Staff, Air Commodore Oluwole Akinsoya retired, maintains that if attention is given to the topics discussed here, then troops will always perform credibly without implicating their superiors as they discharge their duties. In Jaws for New Central, Chizoba and Nyongwe. Chad's Junta Chief Mahatmat Idris Debi now won this week's presidential election in the first round. This is, around, uh, this is according to provisional official results released on Thursday extending his family's decade-long grip on power. Monday's vote aimed to end three years of military rule in a country crucial to the fight against jihadism across Africa's Sahel Desert region. The ANGE Electoral Commission said Debe won 61.03% of votes, beating Prime Minister Success Masra, who garnered only 18.53%. Uh, percent in results due to be confirmed by the Constitutional Council. Mamad Idris Debi, 3,784,360, soit 
Yassine Abdraman Sakin, 22 495, soit 0,36%. Paimi Padake Albert, 1 millions 48 506 voix, soit 16,91%. Pour lui de cette large victoire, je suis désormais le président élu de tous les Tchadiens, aussi bien le président de ceux qui ont voté pour moi. Tchadian soldiers and regular citizens took to the streets of Indjamena to celebrate after Junta Chief Mahatma Idris Debi now won the presidential election in the first round. Soldiers in the capital neighborhood, where masterist parties based, fired their guns in the air after the results were announced, as both in celebration of Debbie's win and to deter protesters from gathering. Near the presidential palace in central Njimena, Debbie supporters shouted, sang, sounded car horns, and fired their guns in the air in celebration. Some frightened persons ran for cover or to their homes, and the capital streets were soon empty as. At least two uh, teenagers were injured by falling bullets, an AFP journalist saw. Now, the MK, together with its leader, former President Jacob Zuma, and the IEC are today at the Constitutional Court to square up after the election or elections body appealed the ruling of the Electoral Court, which found Zuma was eligible to run as candidate in the upcoming poll despite being handed a 15-month prison sentence by the Constitutional Court in June 2021. Meanwhile, Zuma and the MK party want the six justices who sentenced him to 15 months imprisonment in 2021 for contempt of court to rescue themselves on the matter. However, the IEC said no matter the outcome of the appeal, it would have no bearing on the election as all electoral processes have been concluded and no more changes to the ballot or the electoral list could be made. Zuma is the leader and the face of the MK party. South Sudan's government has launched a new round of peace talks with rebel groups on Thursday in Nairobi with Kenya mediating after earlier negotiations fell apart in 2022. Previously, Talks between the government and a coalition of rebel groups which did not sign a 2018 peace agreement that ended a five-year civil war were brokered in Rome by a Catholic association with ties to the Vatican. But the government withdrew from the negotiations in November 2022, accusing the rebels of using the talks to buy time as they prepare for war. Following a request from President Salva Kiir, Kenya agreed to step in as mediator, appointing former army commander Lazarus to lead the talks. Listening to both the representative of the opposition and the representative of government and the language of brotherhood therein gives us hope that there is a chance for us to settle this once and for all. For peace in South Sudan, we would, we when fully achieved will bring everlasting stability and economic development in the region and uh, live alone in South Sudan, but uh, in the region. Peace agreements are not being implemented. What we need is a serious dialogue, a real soul search, so that we can really address the root causes and come out with a new social contract that will define what... Doctors at the Kuwaiti Specialty Hospital in Rafa say they are struggling to cope with the surge of emergency cases amidst shortages of staff and equipment alongside the lack of capacity now that other hospitals in the area are out of service. There are currently three hospitals operating in Rafa, including an Emirati maternity hospital. And over the past weeks, the World Health Organization has been ensuring that they are fully prepared and supported in terms of medical supplies. Dr. Ahmed Dahir, 
Team lead of the WHO office in Gaza said the hospitals are already overloaded with patients and recent developments have affected access. He cited the example of Al Naja Hospital, which provides dialysis services for more than 100 patients. في ظل الظروف الحالية وفي ظل الاجتياح البري لمدينة رفح وفي ظل خروج مستشفى أبو يوسف النجار عن الخدمة أصبح المستشفى الوحيد الذي يستقبل الإصابات هو مستشفى الكويت التخصصي وصراحة مستشفى الكويت يستقبل عدد مهول وعدد كبير جدا من الإصابات مما أدى إلى تفاقم الوضع الصحي في هذا المستشفى وفي مدينة رفح بالكامل والآن في خروج مستشفى يوسف النجار عن الخدمة أصبح الآن صعوبة في تحويل الحالات وصعوبة في استقبال الحالات أصبح كم هائل يأتي من الإصابات إلى مستشفى الكويت التخصصي ومستشفى الكويت كان قبل خروج مستشفى يوسف عن الخدمة كان يستقبل حالات جراحية وحالات غير جراحية مثل حالات الأطفال وحالات الباطنة فمع عدد العدد المهول للإصابات يعني أصبح الوضع الصحي في مستشفى الكويت التخصص أصبح صعب جدا وأصبح نقص في الأدوية ونقص في الطواقم الطبية ونقص في المستلزمات الطبية يعني كان قبل حينما يأتي عدد معين من الإصابات كان لدينا القدرة على التعامل مع هذه الحالات لكن الآن في ظل خروج مستشفى بيوسف النجار أصبح في صعوبة في التعامل مع الكم المهول من الحالات مستشفى الكويت هو طبعا مستشفى صغير وإمكانياته بسيطة والطاقة البشرية فيه محدودة جدا وحتى the United Nations says more than 100,000 persons have fled Rafah with the southern Gaza city under the threat of a full-scale Israeli ground invasion. UNICEF's senior emergency coordinator in the Gaza Strip, Hamish Young, made this known during a briefing in Geneva via a video link from Rafah. Members of the, this the attack, we've seen on average about 30,000 uh, people leaving Rafah every day. Um, they move from Rafah city towards the coast, uh, or they move north uh, into the governorate of Khan Yunus or Deir el or what we call the middle area. Um, they add to the members of the Israeli Russian President Vladimir Putin has submitted a proposal that the state Duma, the country's lower house, maintains the ongoing prime minister. Mikhail Mushtin as the head of the new government. Putin was inaugurated on May 7th, embarking on a record-breaking fifth term with more power than ever after winning presidential polls in March, devoid of all opposition. The 71-year-old Kremlin chief has ruled Russia since the turn of the century, securing a fresh six-year mandate in March after winning presidential elections devoid of all opposition. Putin kicks off a six-year term embodied by advances on the battlefield in Ukraine and sustained economic growth despite a barrage of Western sanctions. Организовать работу именно так, как мы с вами договорились на последней встрече с правительством, работать без пауз. Хочу в первую очередь благодарить вас за доверие, которое вы оказали мне, задачи, которые вы поставили перед федеральным собранием в своем послании и, конечно, те национальные цели развития, которые были указаны в новом майском указе. Это ориентир и приоритеты в работе правительства. Но хочу вас заверить, что никаких пауз. Have you ever experienced frustration of your money vanishing each month without any clear explanation? You're not alone. It's common for many of us to get caught in spending patterns that deplete our wallets and also hinder our financial aspirations. Ola Ola Deleda CFA, the founder of the Money With Club, joined us as a guest on the Business Edge show to share his insights or her insights on tackling detrimental spending habits. For me, you know, this is a kind of uh, revolution in digital code. This is a change of dimension that investors are looking at to see if this trend will be sustained in digital code in their second quarter. And I believe that that trend will also be sustained. Why? If you look at the, the factor that brought about this figure in digital code, they are very clear. You know, you have seen that the government policy in terms of uh, no monetary policy have impacted all the banks. We have seen it in their world, in their net interest income. But because of the banks also have been what we call a holding structure. If you remember before the Soludo recapitalization, 
most of the banks are having you know, universal insurance, um, uni universal license. That means they can you know, do other business apart from the banking uh, business. Then you saw the impact on the banks almost uh, like uh, you know, two decades ago, or let's say you know, a, a decade plus. Now we are seeing that banks in Nigeria are directly going back to source structure again by coming up with a holding company. That means in the holding company, you have uh, insurance, you have a uh, you know, stop working firm, you have an uh, issuing house, you have other business to do, you have payment platform, that has certain no, no kind of imparting digital code. Don't forget that it's a bank that last We apologize for the mix up, we'll bring the right visuals much later. The world of sports, Nigeria's under-17 side, Flamingos, have arrived Bamako, Mali, ahead of Saturday's FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup qualifying fixture against Burkina Faso. The team landed at the Madibo Keita International Airport on Thursday evening from Abuja. The third-round tie was moved from Ouagadougou to Bamako due to inability of the Burkina Faso Football Federation to provide a suitable venue for the game. The encounter will hold at the stayed 26 March Bamako on Saturday. The reverse fixture will hold uh, at the Moshuda Biola Stadium in Abuja on Saturday, May 18th. Meanwhile, CAF has made a change to the fourth official Saturday match at the stayed 26 March in Bamako. Originally, Jocelyn Basabana were, was to be the fourth official, but uh, CAF has now appointed Taneba Bagayoko from Mali to be the fourth official. It has been a good journey for us, and it's good go to God Almighty for a safe journey. Uh, it will be stressful because of the uh, two stopover we have on the way, but notwithstanding, this is part of the game. Um, getting to this place, we are well settled now, and uh, we are more focused than ever before. No fully of reason why we travel down to this place that we need to I mean win our match here and uh, make the the toilet in Nigeria a form here for Marty. And uh, all preparation has been well put in place while we are in Nigeria. But well, we still have uh, about two sections before the the main match on Saturday. One we have uh, a light workout tomorrow morning and then by afternoon and half four, we will be out there to feed the top and then to have the last rehearsal for the match. Uh, we must get to the World Cup. And um, before we can get to the World Cup, we need to uh, win the match against the uh, Burkina Faso. So there are, there are things that we'll be able to. In Marcel, the Olympic touch relay continues in front of Marcel Town Hall. In the presence of former Marcel striker and legend Didier Drogba, who will later be the city's final touch bearer. Robert describes the relay as a source of pride for the city, which represents a great deal for France in terms of sports. Et de voir que euh, Marseille a été choisi pour pour la réception, l'accueil de, de, de la flamme olympique euh, avant tout son parcours jusqu'à 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 Paris. C'est c'est un honneur pour cette ville, c'est une fierté pour cette ville qui représente beaucoup en termes sur le plan sportif, pardon, pour pour la France. Defending champion in Elena Rybkina has uh, withdrawn from the Italian Open due to illness. The tournament is set on Friday. The World Open 2022 Championships withdrawal was announced hours before she was scheduled to begin a title defense against Romania's Irina Kamelingu Bego. Now, Kazakhstan's uh, player would be replaced by French woman Oshana Dodin, the tournament said in its post on X, which wished our 2022 champion a speedy recovery, they added. World number four is scheduled to play in the French Open later this month. And that's a wrap on the news at this time. But before we go, another look at some of our top stories. We told you that court rejects Yaya Bello's request to stop trial. Ex-aviation minister Hadi Sirica, daughter, banned from traveling abroad. We also told you that Chadians celebrate as Junta chief Idris Derby Idna wins presidential vote. Well, don't forget to send in your eyewitness report to the WhatsApp number on the screen. You can also follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. 
You can watch us live across these platforms. That's DSTV Channel 422, Star Times Channel 274, Avo TV, and YouTube. And thanks for watching. I'm Dakwa at Dubai. See you soon. Thank you.